we need more um, ev like everyday acts of courage. Um, and we also need um, to manifest this collectively, like to manifest this collective boldness. Um, you know, during this conference, we're going to be discussing switch points and the ways that race and class and gender and other things come together and sometimes combust into beautiful things. Um, and I'd like to add this other switch from personal and the individual to the collective. And it's something that I've thought a lot about at, um, at MU, at Mujeres Unidas, you know, we have a mission of personal transformation and community power. And there's something that happens when you get a room full of people telling their personal stories. Um, and that's where we create our um, shared experience and our analysis. Um, and it creates this kind of opening for bold collective action. So for me, it's been such a humbling experience to be part of this journey of immigrant women coming into their identity as domestic workers. And you know, this profound like self-transformation that's happening as we realize the value of the work that we do in our own homes and the value of the work that we're doing in other people's homes. And watching women decide that domestic work is no longer something to be ashamed of, but something that should be celebrated and respected. Um, and, and from there, developing a political and campaign strategy to not only right the wrongs in our labor laws, but to really create a cultural shift that we need in this country and galvanizing a movement that's now at the forefront of fights for racial and economic and gender and immigrant justice. So to give a little bit of historical context, and many of you may know this already, um, but in the 1930s, at the height of the U.S. labor movement, domestic workers and farm workers were excluded from some really basic labor protections, the right to form a union, um, and many other basic labor protections in the Fair Labor Standards Act, basically to appease Southern segregationists who were afraid of black organizing. Um, and it wasn't until the 1970s that black domestic workers organized um, with the leadership of Dorothy Bolden to win the inclusion of domestic workers into minimum wage laws. But to this day, domestic workers are excluded from a lot of the basic protections that the women in that video were talking about um, that most American workers take for granted. You know, at the same time, the women's movement made these really huge gains in the ability of women to enter the workforce and access professions dominated by men, but fundamentally failed to address the contradiction of all the unpaid work that women do in their own homes. Um, and so women to this day do the lion's share of um, work in their homes. And because this work is under-recognized and undervalued by society, it's not surprising that the women of color doing this work for wages are also disrespected and underpaid. And so I'm so honored to be here with all of you tonight um, and wanted to share some of the four key lessons that we've learned in our work. Um, so. Number one, I'm an organizer, so I'm a little biased, but number one is the power of organizing. And in particular, um, building a base of people most affected by the issue. So in California, we've really done our best to lead a campaign that reflects the kind of change that we want to see in the world, and a campaign that lifts up the voices of domestic workers and respects not only the work that they do, but their leadership and expertise on the changes they want to see. Um, so, you know, not only do we do a lot of outreach and hours and hours of door knocking and speaking to women at laundromats and bus stops, um, but we also, you know, started our legislative campaign by holding a Congress and bringing together a hundred domestic workers from throughout the state and doing simultaneous interpretation into three languages and having domestic workers themselves identify what are the priorities and what are the things that they want to see change on the job. And then from there, take those priorities and hand it over to our legal team and have them draft legislation. Um, and then just creating vehicles for domestic workers to be engaged in the campaign in an ongoing way. So that, um, you know, we built a steering committee of the six domestic worker organizations. And these workers were not only um, informed about the political process, but, you know, they were there every step of the way. Um, they were consulted on every single amendment that happened to that bill and were the final decision makers on whether or not we were going to accept certain changes. Um, they filled buses to be at every hearing and every vote in Sacramento with their families. Um, and 
you know, we're so proud of leading a grassroots legislative campaign and upsetting business as usual in the Capitol. And at the same time, we're really clear that domestic workers alone are not going to be able to win the kind of protections and laws that we need.